How you doing? This is Dog Life Radio, and I'm your host, Rossi Giugio. Welcome. Welcome. All are welcome. Uh, so, this week, we have yet again a couple of uh, uh, great, fantastic, interesting, and fun guests that uh, I had a chance and opportunity and privilege to speak with. Thank you, Johnny and the boys. So, yeah, this week I had the chance to actually take my first official road trip, packing up all of my sophisticated podcasting equipment into the Dog Life Radio vehicle, traveling to Tolland, Connecticut to visit Tolland CrossFit and talking with Trey and DJ. Um, it, was, it was a great conversation. I got the chance to tour their brand new box gym. Um, fantastic, shiny new equipment. Everything you would want um, out of a CrossFit, but also probably everything you would need from a gym in general for overall health and fitness. Uh, I'll be throwing a bunch of pictures up on my Instagram. They are at Tall and Fitness on Instagram, Facebook, all of that stuff. I also had a, a short video walkthrough of the gym. Uh, it's up on YouTube on Dog Life Radio. Uh, take a peek there if you're in the area. Drop in. I know they would love to see you. Uh, if not, take a look on their, uh, on their website. Just poke around. Uh, show them a little bit of love. And as always... I hope you enjoy the conversation as much as I had in doing it. Peace. Hey, thanks for supporting the show. Remember to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, all at Dog Life Radio. Help me spread the good word, too, so share the links on whatever social media you prefer. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or follow it on Podbean, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, or wherever you're listening. So throw up a four star or four cloud or whatever. Thank you very much. It's the best way to help others find the podcast. And as always, send me any feedback. I would love to hear from you. Dogliferadio at yahoo.com. On with the show. All right. We are we're here. This is Dog Life Radio. Uh, first formal road trip. This is actually my first trip into the field to do one, so this is pretty exciting for me. Awesome. Um, we're here at Tolland CrossFit with the uh, owner proprietors, uh, DJ and Trey. Thank you very much for inviting me out. Thank you. Thank you for having yeah, us. Yeah, we like the dog life thing. I like dog life. <laughs> we, have a, we have a dog that lives with us all the time. Right? I wish I, I could yeah. live the dog life. I got to tell you, I was walking around the corner and. I, the dog that's out there it didn't scare the crap out of me, but I was looked down and went, "Oh, hey, how you doing there, buddy?" Yeah, yep. that's my girl Abby. She's uh, probably the most popular person here. Rather, than yeah, the I'd house. say I'd yeah. say if uh, if we didn't show up and she did, the place would run. <laughs> yeah. But when she's not here, everyone feels a difference. There's yeah. there's a void. DJ was so. telling me the other night. I, I left a little bit early one night, and uh, he said everybody was coming in was missing Abby. They weren't missing me. No, I wasn't here, but Abby was not here, so you gonna drop the dog off. And then <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of we might just need to keep the dog here. I was saying it might be it might be beneficial just to. Have so the mascot. It, it might be an, another mural because mm. um, I will put some pictures up and, and do some YouTube videos. I'm gonna take a stroll around just to show this, but we've got a lot of awesome stuff on the walls. The artwork in this room, the perfect sound booth, the kids' room. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, awesome. Yeah, so, little Ella, our, our uh, eight-year-old crossfitter, she did this wall for us. She came up with it on her own. Um, <laughs> there's a couple misspellings, but she actually knew about the misspellings. She, she thought it would yeah. be, you know, authentic if we kept them in. So, but it's a nice <laughs> That's touch. Super yeah. cute. ABCs of CrossFit. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. From a kid's point of view, it's yep. fantastic. So as you were walking me around and kind of giving me the tour, the lay of the land here, you, you showed me a couple of before pictures. Um, what I thought would be a great jumping off point is um, this is this is your first jump, or your first foray into this type of, a, a, I guess, entrepreneurship of owning a gym. Um, what, what, the, what made you take the jump and how did this come to be here? <laughs> how do we end up here? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think of myself, uh, you know, I was a... Uh, you know, insurance person for almost 40 years. Yeah. And I uh, was thinking I was going to ride off into the sunset, but I was doing some CrossFit coaching part time. And I know DJ was, is still an elite athlete and a really a very well regarded coach. I never really thought I would get into uh, a business doing CrossFit or CrossFit coaching. But, uh, you know, when you have such a strong partner, it's, it's, a, it's a much easier decision. DJ and I happened to meet at a strongman event or a strongman uh, mm -hmm. certification, mm -hmm. and we were both really taken with the strongman, uh, the at 
cobblestones and the keg <laughs> clean. It's the coolest. Yo Carry yeah. 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 and actual yeah. bar stuff. So we, we really kind of uh, jazzed over that and uh, kind of started the dialogue of, hey, what do you think about starting a business together? And I think a lot of people have those conversations literally yeah. for months and it's just, you know, kind of over a beer kind of conversation never mm-hmm. happens. Yeah. But we kept on poking at it and poking at it and I think eventually we decided that we had a lot of things uh, in common as far as our our ideas about what a gym would be and uh, started actively looking for a space and when we found the space it kind of all just accelerated from there yeah yeah you say poking at it I feel like he was kind of poking at a bear that was ready to come out of the cave so <laughs> yeah. for me it was uh, it was something I had I'd always wanted to do so uh, you know I think my you know my I guess progression or my experience has been you know I I was going to school, uh, you know, and you know, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And so I, I was kind of going down that, you know, physical therapy, chiropractic path, mm-hmm. and I came across CrossFit. And so I started doing CrossFit and really just kind of went all in on it. You know, and I was one of those guys that was, you know, I was a football player growing up, so I got more into like weightlifting and powerlifting. Yeah. And then, which I still love. And the cool thing with CrossFit is that you can still do all those things. You know, um, but I found CrossFit. And I was like, "Wow, this is a great balance. It, it really gives you that feeling of still being an athlete, even though you're not really in the sports realm." Um, you know, I, I suffered some injuries, you know, in high school and before going to college that kind of prevented me from going to that next level. Mm-hmm. And I, I actually attribute, or I give CrossFit a lot of credit to actually getting me kind of rehab back to a place where I can now, you know, I'm, I'm probably more functional and more healthy than ever. Um, so, anyways, you know, long story short, you know, it started coaching and I was coaching for quite a few years. I ended up, I was a head coach over at a gym uh, just a couple miles away from here, and that's where I met Trey and his family. And you know, and, and you know, long story short, somehow there's a connection between him and my mom, and they grew up on the same <laughs> street together, actually across from each other. And so, uh, but anyway, so it was it, it was just weird. a really cool weird coincidence, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and we and we didn't even know that to start. It was like you know, all of a sudden, you know, it was like Whitaker, Whitaker, and then like they just kind of came together. It. it was yeah, it was just really cool. So, um, but yeah, so my you know, it just yeah, it just it's like almost everything just kind of fell into place. It just really worked out, and mm-hmm. like like Trey said, you know, uh, having a great partner just makes it that much easier. You know, so I think we both provide. Uh, a, a great balance uh, to to really get this place you know started and you know moving. Yeah, I think my I, I came to it uh, in a little different way. I was kind of going probably through a midlife crisis in my in my forties and took up jujitsu and judo. So I I, you know and I, I did that for a, a, a number of years and eventually uh, got to be a black belt in jujitsu and but at, at, kind of during that path I got diagnosed with uh, cancer a couple of times. And one of, one of those times I, I lost a kidney to cancer. And it was a recommendation from family and, and physicians that I don't get thrown to the net repeatedly. <laughs> but I was looking for it's something. It's a little rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could see that. I could see you that. Know, that. You only have one kidney left. You shouldn't do that. So I was looking for something, uh, again, that was challenging. And I'd, I'd always been that way. I was a paratrooper in the Army. I was a marathon runner. I... I like jujitsu in my middle ages and getting beat yeah. up by much younger guys. <laughs> so um, CrossFit was that next challenge. It was really something that I, I couldn't really do pull ups. I yeah. you know I, I couldn't do most of the movements that I had. I never got upside down for headstands, and uh, so I walked into the gym and and started to challenge myself that way. And it is very addicting and, and consuming uh, when you first start into it. So. Mm. And humbling. And humbling. Oh, it's yeah. a humbling oh, yeah. sport, yeah. 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 Like, there's not, always room for improvement yeah. and growth, and, and that's the, that's one of the best parts of it. Yeah, yeah it's endlessly humbling. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. Every day, day. yeah. I could see yeah. that. Yeah. So so um, the stars align. You guys kind of make that connection. You find this particular facility, and the, the date of this recording, obviously this will get dropped live a, a few weeks down the road, but tomorrow is the grand uh, grand opening open house open correct? house open yeah. house yeah. yeah well i think we call it the grand open the house. grand open house because we didn't like grand opening and yeah. we didn't like open house so we figured let's just put them both together yeah and we, make it we can make up our event. own terms right yeah. no problem yeah. <laughs> yeah no we've been we've been in uh we've been in business for like a it's sort of sixth week maybe or fifth week six yeah. week i think it's well, not, not too many weeks but there you go but you know given the fact that we've been you know 
conceptualizing this for a long time and then kind of takes to put it together. It seems like you've been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's just been uh, six weeks of uh, craziness and, and learning and meeting a whole lot of new friends. Yeah. And so, you know, we've been very excited by how well it's come along. But yeah, that progress of you know finding a location, kind of having a, an idea about how it would come together. And we were very fortunate. I think the most fortunate thing we had in all of this was we had just really extraordinary support from you know our friends, yep. new friends. Yeah. When we had like the truck come with you know tens of thousands of pounds of equipment, yeah. we we had 15 people show up to offload the truck. That's um, awesome. You know when we had a photo day to kind of create content for our website, yep. we had probably 20 people show up mm -hmm. and you know do CrossFit and do movements for us that day. So. When you look back, or the guy who built our front desk, or yeah, actually yeah. Uh, himself and another friend of ours built that front desk, mm -hmm. the people paint, painted the murals, uh, the folks that put in the floors, it's really kind of an endless you know, uh, list of people that have stepped forward to kind of help us make that happen. Well, it's beautiful. The whole place is awesome. As we walked around, I mean, uh, from, from what you were saying, it's got all the stuff that you would expect, if you know what to expect going into a CrossFit mm -hmm. type of a space. But where w is there anything here that's kind of like, when you were conceptualizing it, you're thinking, okay, we need you know this type of equipment, and we need kettlebells, and we need this. Where's the? Um, this was my, you know, my my special touch. I mm -hmm. wanted to make sure we had something <laughs> like this that makes it, you know, something special to you. Well, I'll take it from here. All so. right. Uh, All no, right. it was uh, <laughs> no. He just the man behind you know most of the architecture on our equipment side. So. I th yeah, I think um, you know just. In my experience, right, I've been to, I don't know how many boxes exactly I've been to, and I know Trey's been to many himself, but you know, I've been to so many different uh, certifications and trainings and just workouts and mm -hmm. drop-ins and all over the country, if, if not into, into many other countries, just you know, dropping into different gyms, boxes, and other facilities, fitness facilities, and I've just been over the years kind of collecting data, you know, just like what is it that I really like from each individual place, yep. you know, and I've just been kind of like picking this thing and that thing and just just one thing after the other, just kind of putting it together and then, you know, you can even say, like Trey knows, I literally created a entire sheet that had the whole layout of exactly how we wanted the gym and I made like three different revisions or three different copies. Like, so if this didn't work, we'd go this route. If so, this wait, was yeah. that before you found this particular facility, you had that sketch in mind? Or I mean, I always versions? had, I always had like a version in my head that I, yeah. I, I always knew, I, I had an idea of what it is I wanted in a yeah. CrossFit gym. Uh, once we found the location, that's when I can kind of narrow it down. And then really, I mean, you know, we, like Trey knows, we literally took all the measurements of every single wall, door, uh, the entire <laughs> thing. We took every single measurement and it was just to a T. You know, I just like how much matting we had was to a T, right? How much turf we put down, you know, where we put the rig, where we put this piece of equipment, right? Where we had shelving and storage and, you know, the, the kids, were, like everything was just like placed in such a way that it just, you know, really, it was just a puzzle. You know, it was a matter of taking all the pieces, putting them together and making it into this one epic, you know, CrossFit gym. So I think the nice thing about it for us is that, you know, we painted the walls, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah, we, we the pictures the you were showing, the guys, you guys <laughs> were everybody <laughs> smiling and oh painting the walls. Because so yeah. those before pictures, this was not a gym before the this oh, is, no. this gym is here. This was industrial space. Yeah, it looked like a hazardous waste recovery. It did. Area. It, was, oh, it, was, it, was, yeah, no it was pretty, yeah. it was a pretty tough shape. I think both DJ and I, you know, when we were, you know, bringing our, our family and our wives here for the first time to show it to them, we, we had to do it with a lot of, you know, you know, uh, preamble. We have we say, hey, you know, I know it doesn't look like much. I know you might cry when you see it. And it just looks like we're, we're going down a path of, of you know that's going to just end horribly. Um, but you know, we had a vision in our head. We had a, a sense for where it, what it could be. And quite honestly, it, it came out better than we could have hoped for. When people come in and they see the gym, uh, quite often people sign up the first day because they're just like, oh, this is this is really something. You know, special. This is very, very different than what I'm accustomed to seeing. This, this is. I mean, this is phenomenal. I mean, I've been in. Um, I can't say I've been in nearly as many boxes or CrossFit gyms. <laughs> Technically, I think this may be the first official fully CrossFit gym that I've stepped foot in. Yeah. I've been to a number of different facilities. Actually, I think in New York City, I did go to one. 
but a ton of gems. This is a beautiful gem. Oh, it's okay. absolutely beautiful. Well, I know it's not uh, maybe state of the art necessarily because we are in an industrial park, mm. you know, and we have the bay doors and, and other, all those things that come with it. I gotta tell you, the bay doors kick ass. Oh, yeah. I like the bay yeah. doors. Being in New England, you know, uh, in the fall, in the summer, in oh. the spring, you'll probably be, you know, awesome to have those things open. Yeah, there's a couple, there have been a couple nights here where we've had classes and, the, you know, the sun was setting and it, the sky was purple and the people are working out and the bay doors are open and, you know, it's it's pretty extraordinary in those nights. This is it. And the music yeah. blasting, you know, and you're like, yeah. this is exactly just what we were hoping for, you know. Surreal, just surreal yeah. experience. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. So for the people who maybe haven't experienced a CrossFit gym before and now they're listening to this going well they're saying how awesome it is what could they expect coming here as a potential member what do you, what what would you uh, have to offer for them like what's the experience and that you picture for them I think I think the you know it's funny we when we were actually designing our logo we sat down with a, a gentleman who did a fantastic job and uh, you know, give him a shout out. Yeah, right? Steve Boyd, right? Yeah, Gotta Steve give him Boyne. a shout out. But uh, yeah. he uh, he took us through this process of, you know, basically figuring out what is the, what's like the life force, right, behind Tall and CrossFit. You know, what is it, why, why is it we're doing this? Why, you know, what, what do we want our, our actual uh, logo to represent? You know, or what do we want that to, what words to describe that? And so when we did that, you know, the thing, some of the words that came up was like, community and 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 just love support and uh just i don't know i mean we, there obviously there's things like strength and we want people to be empowered and so many different words kind of came out um but i think when people walk in the door we want them to feel welcome yeah. you know we want everyone to feel welcome regardless of how old you are right like we just had a class you know and you know literally it, like the age range was 50 years yeah, we had you a know? grandson and grandmother. So, yeah, we class. literally had a grandson That's and awesome. a grandmother in the same class. Yeah. You know, 50 years difference, and they're working out right next to each other. So it doesn't matter, you know, how, how young or how old you are. We're going to be able to, you know, get you in here. We're going to be able to, we're going to take care of you. We're going to give you a workout. We'll scale it for you as needed. And you're going to, you're going to leave here feeling a little bit better. You know, I think, and that's ultimately what we want to do is we want people to really enjoy that hour as if it's one of the best hours of their day. That's you awesome. Know? So... Yeah, I agree. I mean, like, that's what we're looking for. We, we focus on you know, the community. We want to be part of the talent community that we're in. Mm -hmm. uh, this is DJ's, you know, uh, town of residence. So he, he's, you know, uh, embedded here and has, you know, a young family that he expects to be here for, you know, many decades in the future. Sometime. Yeah. Sometime. <laughs> Sometime in the future. Yeah. So this is his hometown. And, uh, you know, we want to be a big part of that. Uh, there was a you know, kind of the, the big town road race last week, and mm -hmm. we went down there with a group of our folks, and we ran, ran in the race. Um, you know, we are having an event at uh, UConn at the sorority this weekend where we're bringing up a bunch of CrossFit stuff. And, and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that sounds like fun. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 What's well, a fundraising thing for them? So, yeah. I mean, we're, uh, we're always we're going to be trying to push ourselves yeah. um, as strong members of the community, not only here in the in the box, but also outside on the in the in Tallinn. So it's it, it sounds like things are definitely moving very well for you. I know um, a few months back, I remember. I, I think I was listening to Mark Bell's podcast. I don't know if you listen to Powercast. Yeah. Um, they were talking a little bit. It may have been more than a few months ago, but they were talking about how they were very familiar with a few boxes that have been closing. And they were taught, started to talk about, well, maybe this is kind of the, the ebb to the flow of the CrossFit industry. But then, literally like two, three weeks ago, they were talking about it and how they're seeing it. it it's just continuing to evolve. Mm -hmm. And potentially what they had seen in some of their spaces may have just been bad business models, maybe something along those lines. Mm -hmm. The evolution of what's happening because I see it being, it's, it's marketable, not you know trying to make a sales pitch, but to what you were describing. What you get here is that sense of community, the wellness, the feeling of being belong um, is going to become more applicable to more than just 25-year-old fit, really, you know, good-looking people. 
You know, yeah, we it's have not we have those. We folks like those there. people. Well, yeah. yeah, you know, <laughs> okay. It's okay. We, I used I'm to 28, so you know, I'm not. I was gonna throw it out there. We just yeah, met, but I didn't want to say. He's kind of Jack. He's pretty sexy. So yeah, he's the sexy side. Well, you know, I like to think that we cater to different crowds. That's all. You know. I, I, when they come in, they see me. They're like, "Oh, if he can do it, you know, then oh. yeah, it's the, oh, 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 you can cater to the older crowd that way." Yeah, well, I fall into that category yeah. myself, being an older guy. But yeah, it's um, you're talking about the grandmother and the grandson, um, the age range. We were we were talking about it beforehand um, when we were when you were giving me the tour. The fact that you can find people are finding it more acceptable and more common and and achievable to get to that state. Um, generational differences. Yeah, I think you know? that you know, to your to your point, we I've been part of a CrossFit box that closed. You know, I was a member mm -hmm. at a CrossFit box that closed. So I think that you know, I I learned from you know that experience as to maybe why that happened. And um, you know, we had both been to a lot of boxes, and I think that we are trying to be very uh, in tune to what our members are looking for. I know we're very new to this as far mm -hmm. as our own experience in owning a box, but. You know, one of the first things that we did is we put up, you know, suggestion section on our whiteboard so that our members can write their suggestions down. And we literally have dozens of ideas for <laughs> oh, stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, it might, awesome. be, it might be equipment that they're looking for. It might be events. It might be food that they like for us to provide. So we're certainly trying to be a very in tune. Uh, one of the things that we did as far as the desk was we. We could have considered this room that we're in right now as our like coach's office. That was a consideration early on. But one thing that we wanted to do is to be as present as possible. So we put our desk on the floor so that you know when people come in, we want to make sure that they are getting greeted. You know, how you doing today? Let's not rather than kind of just walking into an empty gym and, and just you know kind of finding their way. Yeah. Um, we really want to make sure that um, you know when they walk in the door, it's almost like the Hey Norman Cheers. Yeah. You know, with a bay door, when people are driving and they're walking in from the parking lot, we have this thing where we have, a, <laughs> we have identified way. certain people's theme oh, yeah. songs. Uh, so, yeah. like, <laughs> so one, one, of, yeah, one of our members is a Spice Girls fan. Oh, yeah. So when she comes into her car, we start playing Spice Girls for yep. her. Spice so, <laughs> and we, we kind of have certain people that we know what their, their things are, and we try to, you know, make them feel at home. Do you have a theme song? So when you're coming in, DJ, do you oh. play a song for Trey? Or vice versa, Trey, do you play a song for well, DJ? Well, here's the funny thing about Trey and I, okay? Trey listens to music uh, that, well, okay, he comes from a different era, obviously. <laughs> Not even just a different decade or <laughs> yeah. a different era. So okay, there is a small age there's difference? There's a little gap. There's, there's, a okay. little, there's a 30 year gap between Trey and I. Yeah. So when it comes to music, I wouldn't say we have different tastes, because I actually enjoy his music. And when he plays it, I, I'm, I'm one of those guys, like, you know, if I'm working out, it doesn't matter what's on. If I'm just doing some, some work, it doesn't matter what's on. But, you know, for the most part, I'm very accepting to his music. But I don't know it. <laughs> if you want me to name a song, <laughs> not a chance. Um, it, he, yeah. He'll literally, he'll ask me questions like, Who, who's this artist? I don't know. And if, to him, it's like, oh, come on. It's, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like, yeah, I, I'm anyway, always so. shocked when this generation doesn't know who Peter Frampton is. You know, that's like one of my, you know, touch points. But yesterday we had some Parliament on. Parliament, yeah. Yeah, so that's a little bit of a throwback. <laughs> so, I, you know, I'm always always going back to the, the 60s and 70s and, and putting that stuff on. I will say, it's good music. I'm not, I'm not yeah. going to knock it. So, good. I'm feeling a connection here, Trey. Yeah. My <laughs> kids, um, my kids uh, uh, love when I play some music from the 70s. And um, today I was dropping them off at school and they wanted, they, we've been watching Godzilla movies. So they wanted, I said, did you know this is a song? So we played Blue Oyster Cult, you know, Godzilla, and they loved it. And I started trying to rattle off a couple of the other, some other songs from the 70s. And they're like, no, no, no. They don't like Stranglehold. They didn't like, uh, what was it? I played some Doobie Brothers. Nope, they don't like that. Then oh, I put on Doobie War Brothers Pigs. On. And they're like, oh, yes. Yeah, Sabbath, yeah. Well, they, so they were big into that. And I was yeah. like, so, you know, my kids are a little younger than you. We've had, we've had, we've had a few, <laughs> nice. we've had a few Sabbath days. Yeah. Sometimes we have, we have a, you know, the younger guys like the thrash metal. Oh yeah, which Miss May I? So I, I just found out about them. There is May. That's, ah, that's a band. Okay. That's a little bit. That's a little bit over the top for me. So that's I hardcore. tend to say, if you want thrash metal, we're going to go to like Black Sabbath. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll that'll work for both of us. That's I guess. Yeah. 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 Little war pigs, like you said. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, there, there's just there's just there's a gap. You know, like even Trey was picking on me because I had never seen. Oh, wait for this. 
I'd never seen the movie Jaws. And uh, so we, I had to, I literally went home that night and I watched the movie Jaws. And, you know, he was making a reference because it was like the first week we opened up and we had like this big boom of people coming in. And uh, he's like, man, we're going to need a bigger boat. And I was like, <laughs> That's a classic I, and, I, and I, I literally looked at him and was like, what? I was like, his phone is ringing. I was like, oh my I was like what do you mean by we're going to need a bigger boat? You know? And so he's like, come on. You know, you've never seen Jaws? I'm like, no. That's awesome. So That's awesome. it was almost it was almost a deal breaker, but I think if I hadn't gone and actually watched it, you know, I, you know, yeah, we, there might be some tension, but we're good now. We're good. I understand like the it? reference. I did like it. Yeah, it was good. And I think after I watched it, I was like, you know what? I think I've seen this before. You know, I know that's probably not a good thing to say, but you know, anyways. Yeah, I think I, I think <laughs> real the 30, memorable. Yeah, we, haven't found, we haven't found the thirty years to be a, you know a huge uh, issue. No. I think actually, if anything, maybe we're the same generation. We wouldn't have those interesting differences to talk about so true i yeah. think the 30 years maybe helped well the way you were describing kind of how things were coming together it was a bit of uh a little bit of you complete me kind of thing happening here well yeah we did stare into each other's eyes a totally times. Yeah, yeah. yeah i, I mean we, we were spending you know, we were we were spending upwards of 15 16 17 18 hours a day together still do you know sure, we yeah. still do yeah. so you know sometimes we're napping in the same room or, <laughs> still the bromance is still on yeah, it's, yeah, it's so alive it's, it's alive and well you know <laughs> six weeks in and we're still it's it's the honeymoon phase we're yeah, doing right. well that's good that's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so I want to change the topic a lot. Yeah, you have the bromance. Okay, yeah, yeah. We, we, may, we may come back to that. Okay. Um, I wanted to, you, you had mentioned uh, the suggestion box um, and referencing foods and things like that. One of the things um, I was going to ask about is nutrition. Yourself, uh, you compete. Um, any nutritional coaching programs that you offer here as well? Just kind of throwing it out. Yeah, so I'm um, currently, I so my, my, my background, uh, I went to school for exercise science. Uh, I did take, I took a few courses in school, uh, you know, nutrition courses. Um, you know, I've, my, myself, I feel like my experience when it comes to, to eating has been just really trying a little bit of everything, right? Mm -hmm. So when I first started CrossFit, the big craze was paleo. So I went paleo, right? So I, I did that. So I eliminated a lot of foods. You know, it was, you know, the, the meats and vegetables, nuts and seeds, you know, basically exactly what CrossFit says, um, you know, in their, you know, fitness in 100 words. Uh, and then, you know, after that, I went, I did, a, I did a cleanse. So I started doing a whole body cleanse. And so just kind of, you know, just everything, you know, gut, liver, colon, everything. And, and that was really kind of revolutionary for me because growing up, I was the kid who actually could chug a gallon of milk like a day and uh, and now I can't I can't do dairy period so my experience has been you know I, I went from this kid who basically ate everything and anything I was on like the, the seafood diet you know yeah. to, to now it's a totally different even just a different approach towards food like I look at food as fuel you know mm -hmm. like how do we fuel our automobiles right we put a certain type of gasoline in it and you know, the better, you know, or the, the gasoline that's supposed to be in that tank is going to obviously determine the, uh, the performance of that vehicle. So that's, that's exactly what our bodies are like. Um, so when it comes to nutrition here at Tall and CrossFit, I think for us, it's, it's our approach is to keep it simple. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people are coming in here, you know, they, they, their, their foundation is, is, there's really not much there. You know, so their understanding is very little. Yep. So we just want to keep it simple, right? Like if, if you have someone coming in here that's chugging two liter bottles of Coke, right? We just say, yes. hey, maybe we'll uh, instead of doing the two liter bottle, instead of doing the two two liters, let's uh, maybe do one. You know, mm -hmm. so let's let's scale it back. Let's let's try and just maybe um, you know take some things out, maybe add some things in, and just keep it really simple. You know, as an athlete, com you know, as a competitive athlete, I'll tell you like my regimen is a little bit more restricted. In the sense that I'm big into macros, mm -hmm. um, so you know carbs, fats, proteins, right? I weigh and measure my food. Um, you know, during during the build out of this place, it kind of got a little chaotic because we were spending long days here. So it was really what's available is what I'm going to eat. So, yeah. but lately, you know, it's starting to get a little bit more regimented now that we're starting to get into somewhat of a, a routine or a schedule. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think for the most part, nutrition is just it, we're just trying to keep it simple. And when people have more questions, we offer more advice. Yeah. You know, so we don't want to overwhelm people. I think that's one of the biggest things I've heard when it comes to nutrition is don't don't give people too much. You know. Yeah, so. and I, I think that personally, I think the other piece that comes with it is there's one way. 
there's always more than oh, one way. So Everybody's many, yeah. so I different. Agree. Even you know when the, the, the paleo craze, primal, low carb, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people just process carbs very differently, mm-hmm. um, and it's based on these different nuances to each person. Yeah, makes their nutritional approach should be should be very different. So that kind of more is less. You know, go go with a little bit less, and um, approach seems a little bit more easily to consume mentally as well as something that's more applicable to a larger audience as well. Yeah, and, I, and, and you know, I think having tried so many different things myself, doing the paleo, doing the zone, doing blocks, right, doing, uh, you know, all these macros and, and even kind of, you know, I'm starting to dabble a little with like the ketogenic, right? Having done that and just gone through the experience, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things that if you haven't done it before, like, you know how you know how much experience can you really share with others? You know, so yeah, I think it, it really speaks volumes when you can literally say, you know what, I've done that, and here's here's what I experienced. Doing. So, uh, so I am so glad you said this, and I'm uh, I'm a little bit scared because you're much bigger than me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but when it, I think it was Pavel, I forgot the guy's last name, the Russian kettlebell guy. Yeah, yeah. Who said he'll never trust a trainer who's under forty? I think he said. Oh, then I'm good. You're, we're good. We're both good. Wow. But I, okay, I think wait, that maybe a little extreme. <laughs> I think that may be a little bit extreme. Yeah. But this, the, the the whole point behind it, I think, is there's there's a certain value to experience to yeah. to the point of what you were just saying. Going, I haven't tried it, but I'm going to go out there and tell people to go and do ketogenic. Well, maybe you need to go out and experience it. Mm-hmm. You know, practical application. Book smarts is absolutely needed, but there's something about practical knowledge, and what you just said just definitely resonated. Yeah, yeah, and I, I feel like um, when it comes to, I mean, we're, we're talking about nutrition, but I feel like that applies just everywhere, right? Absolutely. Especially when it comes to coaching and, and you know, Trey, it's funny because, you know, when we when we talk about, like, how we run a class, our structure, things like that, right? DJ, you know, Trey will sometimes say, oh, we, we're going to do the DJ way, right? Like, in terms of the class structure. And for me, it's, you know, it, you know it's, uh, it's very, uh, it's, it's nice to hear that someone wants to adopt something that you're doing because they find it very efficient or effective. Uh, but at the same time, I really, I'm, I'm always amazed by Trey because he's very humble, right? And I think being humble as a coach is super important. And just realizing that we don't have all the answers, mm-hmm. you know, but if you, if you give us a chance, we're going we're gonna to do our best to find it. And I think that's really, I think that's really the the true, um, that's that's an important quality of a coach is is understanding that we don't know everything, but we're going to do everything we can to help you in whatever capacity possible. So, yeah, we have to so, continue to get better. I mean, we think we've heard that from a lot of folks. That's the idea. You want to continue to learn and learn. I mean, this class we just had, I learned from. Every single yeah. class I have, I feel like. You know, I'm, I'm grading myself on how I did and what the approach needs to be next time. And as long as we, we're we open-minded and to that, I think we will get better. Mm-hmm. If, we, if we ever settle on this idea that we know better and we, we become deaf to what our members are saying, I think that's where we'll end up getting in trouble. I, I think that's, yeah. I think it's spot on with that piece. Once you realize, once you get to that point where you're like, I, I know before you're actually going out and doing it. That could be a red flag, you know, where you're like, well, no, yeah. trust me, you know, I already know everything. Yeah, I think we come, you know, DJ is, you know, 30 years younger than me, but I, he's far more accomplished as a coach, and I'm, I'm learning from him every day. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you, I think that's another maybe a lesson is that your age doesn't matter. You know, it yeah. really comes to, if there's a source of knowledge, you should be open-minded to what it is at, at, at any age, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think I thought um, I, I was telling DJ before. I think our paths kind of semi crossed back in a prior lifetime with a previous employer, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> but I think they also crossed uh, over a team link. I think may, I was um, Todd. I thought you knew uh, Todd, my buddy. I do Todd. know Todd. Yeah, Todd and I trained in jujitsu. Yeah, he time. used to beat me up all the time. And yeah. we actually have quite a few jujitsu people that are here in CrossFit now as well. So that those worlds are always kind of intermingling. I, I think some of the similar approach from when I was training is like you're always learning, and it, and the the age, the um, gender didn't matter. I remember rolling with with some uh, some girls or ladies, I should say that I, if. I had to 100% focus or else I was getting tapped because they were that good. Yeah, I, I, I think there, I do think there's a lot of similarities between those things. I, we've talked quite a bit about, you know, we're, we're, we love CrossFit, but it's not the only thing we've ever done. You know, DJ's been part of 
a lot of sports teams I've been involved in other you know team things whether it's coaching or as a as a member and I think it's the community is a big part of CrossFit mm-hmm. you know we're not you know um, silly enough to think that CrossFit is the only thing that people should be doing and this the best way for everybody but we we yeah. we definitely feel that people should be doing something and CrossFit is certainly a a very good option not only from that the uh, athletic component of it but also from coming together with other people meeting different people of different cultures and different abilities etc mm-hmm. we had a, a team workout the other night where we had one athlete who you know we had all these very interesting pairings you know athletes who are you know masters podium athletes working out with you know just your more average but aspiring athlete and they're really working together and there's no there's no division there and we have so many different cultures and uh, you know working together and ages and it's really kind of a great uh, vibe for people to get into and that particular night when we left we were like that was so cool mm. the, the energy in the room was so cool and when you have a night like that you just feel like okay you've really created something that people will walk out to be like that was a fun time I want to come back and that's really what we're shooting for is really kind of have you know, fitness and that type of environment for folks. I, I absolutely agree. I like that whole, you know, that old saying, it takes a village. I think there's this piece where, as humans, we do like to herd up. Oh, yeah. And to find, you know, not necessarily like-minded, but people who are looking to achieve something similar. So that feeling of community, whether the aspiration is to become um, in better shape, health, fitness, wellness, longevity, that type of a thing, yeah. how you get there, there's CrossFit. There's, uh, you know, they, you got strongman bags and farmers carries and yokes and whether, you know, maybe you're going to get some advice and talk to somebody about doing some, uh, some, some positioning from uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for some flexibility pieces. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I love the, I love Jiu Jitsu and I still have a lot of great friends from that uh, thing. We see people in here that they have other communities they're part of. They're part of, we have one group that's part of a r- racing team and they ran the Ragnar Relay mm-hmm. recently, which is oh. like, you know, like a two day run to the beach event you know so they have multiple of these communities they're involved in so we just hope to be one of those really positive communities for folks yeah i think absolutely i think trace did it spot on it's just you know creating creating community creating a culture and environment that really is just open and welcoming to everyone who walks in the door you know i think when i when i first started crossfit it was funny because um i feel like everyone that i saw was they fit that stereotype of right the 20 to 25 year old like you know person that wants to compete and be an athlete and one of the things and I've said this to Trey many times the thing that I love the most about this place right now is I think our our average age is well over 45 yeah you know so. well it's over awesome 45. I'll feel young <laughs> yeah, you're, you're the young athlete. So, yes but but that's not that's not always the most typical thing in a CrossFit gym you it, know and you would think me being you know a younger competitive athlete I'd be like oh man I want more people to throw down with absolutely not I'm loving that as a coach, we have the opportunity to work with all of these different age ranges and we are scaling the workouts so that everyone is finishing around the same time. So like, it doesn't matter if, it doesn't matter if like today, right, if I'm clean and jerking 225 pounds and then the other person next to me is clean and jerking 50 pounds, right? If we finish at the same time, we're, we're all, we're all cheering for each other and we're giving high fives. It's just yeah. like the best feeling in the world. It's like you just threw down with, you know, someone on the football field or whatever. It, it's so. awesome. And it gives this feeling of somebody who's a novice, who's new coming in where it's not intimidating. Mm-hmm. You know, it's something that, Hey, I can do this and I can come in and, and work out with yeah. these people. I agree. I agree. I think we hear it quite often and I think CrossFit, you know, HQ knows that they don't want to be cast as this, you know, uh, sport where you need to be elite athlete to participate. Mm-hmm. So I think they've done a lot of work over the past couple of years trying to, you know, reinforce this idea that this is really a fitness regimen that everybody can be involved in. And we're trying to add, you know, make sure that that happens. We're also trying to have a good time at, mm-hmm. at the same time. You know, I, the other day we had people that were practicing rope climbs and it turned into like a Miley Cyrus wrecking ball. <laughs> people, Miley Cyrus wrecking ball and people were swinging from ropes. Oh, so, don't, yeah. don't post that. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and the other day we had, we were doing some synchronized warm ups and people were holding hands while they were skipping <laughs> and stuff. So yeah. I think we're trying to make it so that, you know, we're, we're going to try to train and sweat and fall on the floor after the workout. But. You know, we want to have a good time and enjoy each other's company while we're doing it, you know. So cool. hopefully that's coming across for folks. 
That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I really appreciate you guys taking the time. I know I'm looking at the clock. You guys have a class coming up. So before we wrap up, is there anything? I know you mentioned your website. Let's plug your websites, your Instagrams. Uh, let's hit the address here as well. Promo time. Lay it out. Yeah, I mean, you can uh, you can you know, find us at uh, tallandcrossfit.com. Uh, we're basically all of our social media platforms are at Tall and CrossFit, right? right? Tall and CrossFit on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, you know, you can follow me at uh, D underscore J underscore Harris. Um, and then Trey's got his big following uh, at Trey Witt. Yeah, at Trey know, Witt. So. On Instagram, yeah. He's a big, he's a big CrossFit game. Yeah, you won't player. actually see a picture of me if you go to Aunt Trey yeah. It's just all uh, games, photos, a lot of birds eye photos and stuff like that. So yeah. it's just all, all, cool stuff all CrossFit see. athletes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, for awesome. me, yeah, for me, it's usually my, my kids or my family. <laughs> like that, so. yeah, yeah, mine yeah. usually sneak in there as yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you taking yeah, the time with so us. Much. really no enjoyed uh, having this moment to uh, share our thoughts. And uh, maybe we'll get you to work out. I think that's probably in the cards. Okay. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank awesome. you guys very much. Thank I appreciate you. it. So, folks, and there we have yet another fantastic episode of Dog Life Radio. Uh, thank you again for all of your support, downloads, all of that fun stuff. So, as always, remember to spread the good word. Drop me a rating. Have fun, everybody. Stay healthy out there. Dear little sister, don't you sit there on your fence. Wipe the sadness from